Blizzard wasn't kidding when they called Brigida a meta-changing hero. Everything is different, including main tank play. I'm gonna give some general descriptions of what's going on in the meta, but also do some play-by-play -play breakdowns of me working out and kind of learning some of the important rules of how to operate as a tank player right now in order to see success. I'm hearing a lot of people say that Reinhardt is in a bad place right now, which I think fully comes from the fact that most people, when they play this game, they think of their own impact rather than simply what does this pick do for the team, which of course is a team game. And if you're not winning the team fights, you're losing the game. If you don't have Reinhardt, I think you're going to get wrecked by a good Reinhardt. And if the enemy's Reinhardt is better than yours, you're probably going to lose. Reinhardt has a huge percentage of the overall performance of the team on his shoulders. Back again, it used to be the case back in the multi-tank meta, and it's kind of returned again, where a lot of the game is centered around positioning, cooldown usage, the structure of the engagement, and although it's definitely reasonable to say that you preferred other metas, I can't knock you for having a preference, but it's just sort of changed where the tension of the meta was placed, whereas previously, Tracer could just run amok and do whatever she wanted almost all the time. Even if you stack multiple counters in your comp, it'd be hard to deal with, and the supports were kind of getting the short end of the stick, where they had to play really well to not get run over by some of the DPS, especially backline harassment. Where now now, the pressure point of the meta has now moved to the front line where you used to be able to play a bit more nonchalant and loose and kind of get away with some pretty undisciplined, aggressive, sloppy play. Now you're going to have to be a lot smarter about what you do, but that doesn't mean Reinhardt's in a bad place. That means Reinhardt is in a more crucial place. Because I played in games where the enemy don't have a Reinhardt and I have a Lucio and or a Brigida. You can actually just W mouse one into the enemy because you have so much support around you. But a key thing that I want to note and highlight about this, and it's a point that we'll develop in upcoming videos as well, is that big healing is incredibly overrated in the meta right now. Oftentimes players are really comfortable in playing with really powerful healers, but really because Reinhardt has a shield anyway, which is used to block damage, it's way more important that you get in on a good engagement rather than trying to heal at a bad angle. And with that being the case, a really good Lucio is going to be much better in order to get your Reinhardt in the right spot to be able to fight properly. Whereas I see this all the time. Nobody ever wants to play Lucio and he gets Ryan in position. All the things that you think are really annoying about playing against can get fixed if you position properly with your Lucio and he speeds you around and he has his crowd control all the time. I think he's even more crucial than playing Brigida, who's obviously really strong as well. And the funny thing about Brigida is that Ryan is actually the best tank to play against Brigida. Oftentimes people make it seem like he's the worst, but the opposite is true. Yeah, you definitely don't like getting stunned, but Ryan is the one tank that can battle on Brigida's terms more than anybody else. Something that's really important about countering Brigida is that because she has a shield, a lot of normal damage is ineffectual against her entirely. But what does work are things that penetrate the barrier, like Reinhardt's hammer and his fire strike. And hitting supports through barriers with either the hammer or the fire strike is really good and important at keeping Brigida honest. And although it is a lot to manage and Reinhardt's job is a bit more complicated now that there's so many threats that are going to be able to punch him in the face. He's still the best tank in the game right now. So to help develop these points, I'm going to play by play this Horizon Lunar game on my last placement of my main account because it really highlighted a few key aspects of what works and doesn't work when trying to play these Rhine comps. Poking on the outside, we lure in some aggression. It looks like we have an opening and I'm just getting hit by all manner of stuff, right? And it can be really easy to to get frustrated in this scenario, but you can start to succeed in these moments if you know what type of engagement you need to be looking for. Now, it's a bit of a problem that we have three supports here. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. We don't have a lot of punching power to break the shield or kill anything, but look as I die here, how I'm really the only thing that can be fighting as we try to get in through here. It's really important that you're fighting with a means to an end, that you're trying to get in a component somewhere useful. And realistically, because we didn't have our Hanzo, because he got picked off earlier in the fight, we should have just stopped fighting here. We're running three supports in Zarya. This just wasn't a fight we were going to win. And you kind of have to know that prior to trying to go through. Now, with all of this brawling, we eventually take the point with one of the best combos right now, Graviton Dragon Strike. And if you're building for that and the enemy doesn't have a Zenyatta, you basically just win. And if that's what your comp set up to do, it's okay to remember that that's what you're playing for. You're playing for the ult fight. You're not looking to win 
in the mid fight. But if you are expecting to be able to win in the mid fight, you have to take really good engagements that are going to surround your enemy and get your damage in the right place. Because an issue is with how tanky everything is in the meta right now, unless you land a big cooldown like a Rhine pin, it's very difficult to kill anything. Now, as I say that, the other end of the stick, of course, is having the right damage dealers for the job. If your DPS aren't going to be able to meaningfully get in on the fight, even if you ferry them there and deal the bursts of damage that are required in this meta, you're kind of going to have a hard time. They either need to be able to get full-on pickoffs or have enough shield break in order to whittle down the enemy tanks once you get into position. And that relationship between the tanks making the engagement and the damage characters making use of that space is how engagements are going to go in this meta. Coming up here in a sec, I make another key mistake that I think we can learn from. It's really important that as the Rhine player, you square up against the enemy team's push appropriately to be able to sustain and make space. I thought they were going to come try to take the high ground, but in reality right now, Brigida Rhine is so good at brawling on the point and bursting down anything that contests that if you're not set up in a way that's going to be able to surround it or sustain your Rhine, you're going to have a really bad time. I try to cancel my swing here to put up my shield, but it wouldn't have even mattered because the Brigida stuns me and they put anti-nade, pin, all sorts of resources easily can get focused into the Rhine. And that's mainly the thing that I think a lot of tank players are having a lot of trouble with. It's just tons of stuff can hit you in the face. But at the same time, good ride play carries the entire game. So you have a balancing act of getting smashed by a bunch of stuff, but also trying to do the best job you can, which could potentially carry the whole match by itself. This time when they come to push onto the point, I try to react faster so that we're set up ahead of time. But again, once they get a key anti-nade on me, it's just done. Now, as I've taught in the past, playing the objective is often really bad. But with this Brigida comp, it's so tanky that it brings us back into the days of three and four tank, where you could just get away with brawling on the objective all the time and win that way. But over time, as we start to learn what are the best ways to deal with this, it's going to get a lot harder to just simply jump on point and win it for free. I think ways that you can deal with not letting this happen to you is make contact with the enemy a lot sooner. Looking back at this footage, I feel like I'm being way too passive and I need to be much more proactive at making it expensive for the enemy death ball to really get anywhere. We need to be peeking, poking, prodding, looking for picks to make it hard for them to even get past the choke, much less get to the point. Because if they just are able to stand on the point, they can put all their resources into the front line, whittle it down, and then start capping the point. Or at the very least, because we're running a three support comp, that's how I have to play as the tank player. I do think as the meta progresses, and especially with Brigitte getting nerfed a little bit, people want to play more DPS picks because they'll be able to harass from alternate angles. Like if our defense took positioning around the map and sort of kited away as the push was coming down to point B, we could potentially get kills or pickoffs before they're all just standing on point. But for now, at least, if you run a coordinated death ball and jump on the objective, it's going to test your opponent's capability to play a clean game before they're able to stop you from capturing it. And because of that principle, attacking on just about every map has gotten a ton easier. It puts the onus on the defense to play a lot smarter. And like I said, be proactive in these fights. So guys, those are some of the important lessons that we're learning about how tank play works in the Brigida meta. It's really important that you structure your team fight in a way where your team gets in position to do something useful and not simply just be the guy brawling in the front, taking the brunt of the spam and CC and all that. You sort of have to know how the components of the team comp are going to work when they both fight each other. And for example, if you as the Rhine player don't have an off tank to help protect to you, especially Defense Matrix or Zarya Bubbles, or even just another main tank in order to help lighten the load in blocking damage, you're going to have a pretty rough time. I think I've seen a lot of people just try to run Brigida and Ryan as if Brigida's a full-on off tank. I think that's a really big mistake, actually. It helps you when you're trying to attack the enemy, but it's really bad if you're trying to defend against them pushing in on you, because you just don't really have a way to keep the Ryan up whenever he gets stunned or hit by something. Well, that's everything for today. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out and just know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're going to want to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.